A lot of people are using Rx chairs, especially together with Angular, but they're typically using like 5 or 10 functions that are mostly popular and they don't know anything about other awesome RxJS functions. This is why here are 10 amazing RxJS functions which will improve your code in different cases that you for sure don't know. When most people write RxJS code, they typically just use methods like off, from, from event, map, filter, distinct until changed, combine latest and fork join. And this is amazing because even with this small amount of methods, you can write a lot of great code. But here are 10 other functions that you may find useful in different cases. And the first one here is pairwise. It tracks the changes between the previous value of your observable and the next value, which means you can compare how it changed and do something about it. Here is an example. We have here a scroll event and we're looking on change for Windows scroll Y. Now we're applying here pairwise, which give us access to the previous value and current value of the observable. Now here we can compare them and see if we're scrolling up and down. As you can see in browser, I'm scrolling down, we're emitting scrolling down. When I'm scrolling up, we're emitting scrolling up. We can easily solve this problem by using pairwise. Another function is time interval, and it is really great either for debugging purposes or to monitor how often some button was clicked. For example, here we are listening for click event on our document and we are applying on it time interval. Now here we can console log how much time is passed from the last click. Here I am clicking and you can see that from last click it was 49 seconds. Let's try again, I am clicking again and again and on average we are getting 500 milliseconds, which means it is tracking it correctly. Another function is group by, and you know how useful group by is in plain JavaScript? It is also useful with observables. It allows us to group our observables based on some condition. For example, here we're emitting values from 1 to 9, and we're splitting them in two groups. After this, we're converting every group to array, and this is what we're getting. We're getting here two emits of first group with all grouped values, and the second group with our values. Which means if you need to group your observables, group by is a great solution. Another function is window time. It allows you to collect some events during the specific time. For example, here we are collecting all clicks that are happening in 5 seconds. Let's have a look, I'm clicking, and then after 5 seconds we are getting access to all these pointer events which happened. And you may think, ok, when we need that? For example, you want to collect a bunch of your API requests and send them at once. This is a great solution for that. Another function is start with. Sometimes we don't have a starting value of our observable, typically when we're doing an API call. Like for example here, we're calling a JAX get JSON and we will get the first value only after our request is either successful or fail. When we're using start with, then this stream will have a value even before we will get the first emit. And as you can see here, the value is already there, doesn't matter if the request takes time or will fail. You for sure used reduce a lot inside plain JavaScript, but we also have the same functionality in RxJS. And here is a function scan that does exactly that. You can write some logic similar to reduce to obtain some value. For example, here we are collecting all our clicks to calculate how many times we clicked on our page. As you can see here, I am clicking and our counter increases, but we don't really create some additional variables, it is all happening inside RxJS and we simply increase our value and subscribe to our counter. Another function that I want to show you is a deprecated one, this is why you should not use it. Why I'm showing it to you because I used it a lot before. And it is a function which is called partition, which splits your stream in two different streams. And this is extremely useful when you want to create two different streams based on it. Like for example here we have an inputs with the meets of normal strings and empty strings. 
and we want to split them into different streams with valid inputs and invalid inputs. And we could do that just by partition where we are writing some condition. And then as a result we are getting directly a valid stream and an invalid stream. This functionality was removed because you can achieve exactly the same just by using filter. So we have here our off stream and we can write an input for the valid inputs and for invalid inputs just by using filter. This is why if you ever used partition it is deprecated, just use plain filter for that. Another function that is really great is called retry. Basically your API call can fail and sometimes it makes sense to retry it several times later. And in RxJS we have an amazing retry function for that. We simply throw it on our observable, like here I have a JAX get JSON, and we're applying here retry with our count. This is our maximum retries that we want to try and the delay between retries, which essentially means every single time when we're getting an error from our API, it will retry it into seconds, but not more than five times. As you can see in browser, we got an error. This is why it retried our request five times and only then it went to an error. But sometimes retry won't work for you. When? Just imagine that you are uploading some file and it takes time. Typically server responds to you with job ID and the status. So you are hitting API again and again and you are getting the job status while waiting for it to be successful. Retry won't really help you here because the response from the server is 200 and it does not fail. This is why you can use something like expand. And what expand does, it is simply a recursion. In this case here, our request does not fail. This is why we're adding this expand. And in here we can write code, like for example, how many retries we want to do. And we can increase delay if we want to. And then we are calling this fetch data based on some condition, which means expand is really great when you don't have an error from the server, for example, or you need to build your RxJS in recursive way. And the last function that I want to show you is called zip, and it allows you to collect responses from several API calls. And you want for sure to say here that we have fork join, and why do we need to use zip? The difference between fork join and zip is that fork join triggers only once when all your API calls are emitted. Zip can trigger more than once. Let's have a look here. For example, we have one stream, get GPS, which returns for us some coordinates. And we also have this fetch weather API call. And we have a button on which we are clicking. So basically what we can do every single time when we're clicking on a button like get weather for example, this will be triggered. So we have this click and get GPS, which essentially means we're combining them and based on the latitude and longitude that we got, we're doing a different API call. So again, we have a zip for the click and get GPS and it creates here a tuple and we can call here fetch weather function with correct coordinates. And we can do it again and again and not just single time like with fork join. And if you want to learn RxJS even better and improve your code, I highly recommend you to check my advanced RxJS course that you can find in the description box below under this video.